and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and this is Trading Places Live. It's Wednesday, March 9th, 2022, and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for Thursday, March 10th. Um, currently, and we got a ways to go, but currently futures are um, um, maybe down slightly. Uh, I'm looking at Dow futures right now, down about 30. S&P 500 futures down a point, and NASDAQ futures down about six and a half. But we got a long ways to go before the market opens. And of course, Thursday morning, uh, by the time you're listening to this recording, uh, we'll have um, the February CPI report out. And I can only tell you that the last three reports, um, the market has really struggled after those reports have come out. We do have a little bit of wiggle room to the upside because we've been selling off, saw a nice day, nice re uh, rebound on uh, Wednesday, but we do still have a little bit of room before we get to some key overhead resistance. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the show. Um, so we do have a little bit of room to the upside. Maybe we'll get a little relief for Alley, you know, regardless of what happens with the uh, CPI report, but at least be aware that the market has not reacted very kindly to uh, the last three um, CPI reports. So that is on tap for Thursday morning, and uh, we'll see you know, how the market reacts to it. Um, before we get into today's um, show, let me go through the um, agenda um, for you. And so we will start off with the daily market recap. Um, then we'll jump into talking technically. I've been talking a lot about the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, many of the larger cap stocks. So I thought I'd take a, a look at the um, small cap index, the S&P 600 small cap index, and take a look and see what that's looking like. So we'll take a look at that during uh, talking technically. Then I'll get into candlesticks, uh, point out some differences between breakouts and maybe some topping candlesticks where we're getting false breakouts. Uh, so we'll look at a number of charts there. Jump into earnings spotlight. And we'll wrap the show up as we always do with the three you must see. Before we get into any of that, let me take you over to earningsbeats.com, especially for those of you that are new to the show, welcome. Uh, for those of you that are um, veterans of the show, uh, also welcome, love to have your support. Um, and everybody, of course, is welcome to come over to earningsbeats.com and scroll down. We have a free newsletter, the Earnings Beats Digest. All it requires is your name and email address. Uh, hit that subscribe button, we'll get you set up. It's a three times a week newsletter, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. Normally it's out by about 8.30 in the morning Eastern. Very quick read, couple paragraphs, a chart, focusing on a lot of the things that are really important to us at Earnings Beats. So we talk about relative strength, earnings, uh, gaps, candlesticks, those types of things. Um, I think it'll help bolster your uh, trading arsenal. And um, I think you put it together with some of the things maybe that you already use. Um, and I think uh, it'll help in your trading. Um, also, there's no credit card required. This is a free uh, di uh, EV Digest newsletter. So no credit card required. You can unsubscribe at any time and uh, we will not uh, sell any of your information to third parties. We keep everything in-house at Earnings Beats. So you don't have to worry about that. But anyway, we'd love to have you. One final thing, whenever we have free events, we reach out to this community, sending out room instructions to come join us on Zoom. So uh, that's another reason to be part of that uh, EB Digest community. All right, um, let's move on and talk first about the daily market recap from Wednesday. Big, big day. Most of the gains were at the open, but we did tack on some throughout the day. Dow Jones Industrial Average finished up 653 points. The S&P 500 up 107. The NASDAQ finished up 460 up 3.6%. That was your winner on the day on a relative basis. Mid caps, though, also up 71, which was 2.8%. Small caps up 27, 2.1%. So pretty good day across the board. Again, most of it was at the open, but still uh, really nice action. I uh, do want to point out that of these five, small caps actually were able to get back up above their 20-day EMA. Uh, which was 1299. We closed at 1301. So it didn't exactly blow it away, but we did get back up through. The other four indices that you're looking at here, even though we had really strong days, we are still well off the 20-day uh, moving average on those. Uh, technology was the big leader, up nearly 4%. Always nice to see technology leading. 
We're going to need a lot more of that to really straighten things out in the market. But at least for a day, technology rose to the occasion, up uh, nearly 4%, as I mentioned. Financials, we saw the 10-year Treasury yield re rebound. And I was mentioning that uh, to our members the day before, that it certainly looked like that would be an opportunity for uh, financials to, uh, to bounce back. And they did, up 3.7% on Thursday, or excuse me, on Wednesday. Discretionary stocks up 3.2%. So three of the five aggressive groups were the top three sectors on Wednesday. So that was good news. Materials also strong day up 3.1%. And then on the flip side, it's almost like we turned everything upside down in the market, which by the way, happens a lot when the VIX is up in the thirties. Uh, but energy was the laggard. So energy down a little over 3% back to 75. Might have had just a little bit of a blow off top up there at 80. We'll see whether or not we can hold support. Should have some pretty good price support around 71. Got that 20 day EMA a little above 71. So right in that area should uh, provide energy some nice support if we do drop a little bit further. Okay, moving on to um, the 10 year treasury yield. Uh, this was up eight basis points to about 1.95%, just in time for the big uh, economic report of the week, or one of the two really big economic reports of the week. We're getting that February CPI, and of course, the core CPI will be out on Thursday morning. The headline number expected to rise seven tenths of 1%. The core number expected to rise five tenths of 1%. So even if we strip out food and energy, still looking at a really significant rise there in the core CPI. Um, initial jobless claims also be out on Thursday. Last week was 215,000. We're expecting that to jump slightly to 218,000. But the other really big report this week that I'm expecting is out on Friday morning, and that will be the March consumer sentiment. Uh, it's been dropping. February was 62.8. We're expecting March to drop to 61.7. And as this number drops, it really portends uh, an upcoming recession. So it's just one sign, one signal. It's not a guarantee. But we're starting to see more and more signs and the higher oil prices not going to help, even though we did see crude oil drop quite a bit on Wednesday. Still, it has been up significantly over the past couple of months throughout the uh, 2022 year to date. And that is going to at some point have, well, it already is uh, having an impact on consumers. Uh, if you've been if you're taking a trip to the pump lately, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, gas prices really um, skyrocketing of late. Um, anyhow, 10-year Treasury yield right now is kind of in this range, 170 to the downside, 205 to the upside. I think we're going to test that 205 level. I wouldn't be surprised to see another move tomorrow in the yield because I do expect that we're going to see some pretty high numbers coming out from the inflation report. Um, but we'll see how the market reacts to it, both the bond market and the stock market. Moving on, talking technically. Um, so the first thing I want to do, since tomorrow, you know, we are going to get this CPI report out. Um, this is a chart that I like to follow. This is just uh, two pieces to the chart. The top piece here, this top panel, is the actual core CPI, the release of the number. And it's shown as a monthly candlestick. And because there are no highs and lows, I mean, it's all just one price, you're just getting this flat line. But I wanted to show this as a candlestick so you could see the these significant moves from month to month. Whereas if we put a line chart together, you just see a line going up, be really difficult to tell how much it's going up each month. So that's why I did it that way. Um, down the bottom is the 12 period rate of change. And because this is a monthly chart, that's a 12 month rate of change. So that's a year. So this is providing us the rate of change in core at, of core inflation over the past 12 months. So last month when it came out, we were, at 6.04%. Now we're expecting <clears throat> the core to rise by five tenths of 1%. And then of course, it's the February number. And you can see here, January to February went up, I don't know, maybe 0.2. I don't know exactly what the number was, 0.2%. So if you add 0 0.5 and you strip out 0 0.2, I would be looking for this uh, 12 month rate of change to jump to about 6.3%. And that is going to be the highest number we've seen in about 42 years, 41 years. So expect headline numbers to come out. I don't know how the market's going to react to that, but 
it's almost a certainty that we're going to see this 12 month rate of change moving higher. And so I just want to point it out, you know, this is, I know from looking at these monthly numbers that over the next two months, the February, and then again, the March. So tomorrow's report and then next month in April, we'll get the March number. I know that these two numbers are probably going to be higher than the year ago numbers. And so as a result, we are probably going to see that 12 month rate of change jump, not just tomorrow, but also next month as well. After that, you can see that back in 2021, um, you know, when you go from March to April to May to June, July, then we started to see a much more significant push in the core CPI rate. And so if we do start to see, you know, maybe a little bit more of signs of recession and demand starts to wane a little bit, we could see the CPI start to slow down in terms of these uh, rises. At the same time, we start getting rid of some of these big hikes or these big, uh, these big you know, moves higher in the uh, core CPI. And so what that would mean, if it does you know, begin to uh, um, you know, trend like that, we could see the inflation number peak next month. And historically, when your annual um, core CPI number peaks, historically, that's when growth stocks start to perform better. So I think we could be within a month, sometime between now and next month. That's when I'm expecting one more move to the downside in the market. And I think we could put a bottom in. Um, you know, I'm going to obviously keep watching and seeing. But remember, the market discounts really bad stuff ahead of time. So even though the news will probably get worse over the summer and into the fall, we're going to start to see, um, I think, maybe some, um, some kind of a bottom formation in the market and, I th and maybe even start rising while the you know, really poor news continues to come in. We could be rising into a recession. It's happened plenty of times before because the market prices in the recession before it actually hits. So anyway, I think this is going to be a big chart to watch, not just tomorrow, but also next month. And let's see how these numbers play out and uh, whether or not we get that peak on the core CPI number maybe next month. All right. Also talking technically, I wanted to uh, take a look here at the uh, small cap index. And so this is the S&P 600 small cap. We've talked a lot about the S&P 500 a lot about the NASDAQ 100. Haven't really talked too much about small caps lately. And so I thought I'd you know, pull this up and take a look at it. Um, what I'm looking at is you know, recent lows, you know, now that we've kind of put a double bottom in and we've bounced off of it, I think these two lows are rather significant. So I drew a line to connect them, um, you know, just a downtrend line. And then if I take that same line and drag it to this high over here, it gives me like a channel that I can watch. So in other words, when, if small caps continue to rise, where might they fail? Well, I can point out a few different areas. Uh, we have had prior on the way down, we had two bottoms coming at about 1320. So that provided a support. We broke below that, went back up, hit 1320, failed, went back down again to a new low. And then when we came back up, we printed these reaction highs right here at about 1330. So we went a little bit above 1320. So I'm going to say 1320 to 1330 in that range, we should be looking for sellers to show up. It would be bullish if we could get through that level. Also notice the 50-day moving average, which right now is sitting at 1326, right in between that 1320 and 1330 level. And then finally, this is that trend line coming in. So maybe if we go up and we hesitate for a little while, then we're gonna have the potentially the uh, uh, channel resistance line that could be testing um, price action as well. So there's a lot going on in this chart, but I think right now we have this double bottom. We have these reaction highs back up to about the 1320, 1330 area. And that's your trading range for right now. It's about a 10% trading range. 1330 down to about 1240, maybe even a little bit below 1240 if you look at the tails. Um, so those are the numbers I would watch out for. Now I do show the AD line, which has just been going sideways. I'm actually going to, um, 
let me um you know what it, uh, there we go i wanted those annotations on there uh i'm gonna change out this ad line and i'm gonna put in here the small cap index versus the s p 500 just so that we get a sense of what's been going on here in terms of relative strength because we know it's been going down. I've had some members asking me about, well, what about you know small caps showing some strength here relative to the S&P 500? Well, there's no doubt it has, but it's not going to go down every day. I mean, we've seen relative strength before. We've gone down, then we rally a little bit. It's kind of you know, a little bit of a relative bounce. Well, we just recently went down and put in new lows. So again, we're showing a little bit of a relative bounce. But we could go back a couple of years here on this chart and you can see that really since about a year ago, this relative weakness on small caps began. Now, if you connect the highs, you could maybe say a trend line's being broken. So maybe that is an early sign that things are improving, but I'd still wanna see a little bit more. I mean, in addition to showing this relative strength, I wanna get this absolute breakout that I pointed out just a little bit ago. So if we shorten this back now to a one year chart so we can see those levels again, 1320, to 1330, right in here. That's where we wanna be watching um, the small cap index to see whether or not we can break above. All right, moving on to candlesticks. So in candlesticks, I have a number of charts that I wanna show you. Um, some stocks potentially breaking out, others, are they breaking out or are, are they maybe you know, giving us a head fake? So the first I wanted to point up or point out here was uh, Assurant, A-I-Z. And we had a big breakout here, well, a big gap up, not really a breakout. We didn't get above that September high, but just recently we did. Now, a couple of things bother me on this chart. Number one, notice the AD line for the most part has been going down. So that's a little bit of a concern. Number two, as we, as we try to make this breakout, where are the buyers? Look at the volume falling back down. And then finally, the last two days, we have been in breakout territory intraday, and we've come back down and closed in the bottom half of candlesticks. So I think we've got potentially a short-term reversal setting up here. I don't like that false breakout uh, from uh, Wednesday, where we got the intraday move above all of these prior highs, and then we came back down, failed that on the breakout to close. So my best guess in the short term is that the stock would, will pull back. And where I would be looking, first of all, the 20-day moving average uh, could be a magnet. That's down around 165. So we're talking about three to four dollars to the downside there. If that fails to hold, then I think you've got both the 50-day moving average and candle body support right here at about 158, 158 and a half. And there's your 50-day rising at about 158, just a little above that. So those are the two levels I'd watch if this truly is a false breakout and a reversal back to the downside. Next up is FSK. Notice again, breakout. Notice again, failure and close on the low. This occurred on a day when the market was actually having a really nice day. So I don't like to see this false breakout and reversal with a really not a very good looking AD line and that failure after setting the intraday high. And once again, volume on this reversal was just kind of average. So it wasn't that big, uh, volume breakout that we want to see. Uh, instead, we got that reversal. So this is another one that I'd be a little careful with in the short term. Um, Dollar Tree, DLTR, black candle. I mean, we opened on the high and closed basically on the low. So in other words, we gapped up, looked good, and then we sold off all day long. And this is another one that's struggling on its AD line to break out above where it was back in November. So we haven't gotten that breakout on the AD, even though price tried to do it. So we got a little problem there. I don't like that reversal and that big uh, uh, dark black candle, filled candle, and especially because it was on big volume. So we were breaking out on heavy volume and then we ended up closing near the low of the day. So yes, we did finish up a dollar, but we got to get back through the, the open that 153.98 now to really restore this breakout. In the meantime, I would be expecting perhaps lower prices. And then the last one I have that looked like uh, maybe it was a failure is LLNW. This is Limelight Networks. Double top, had a big move here, gap up, very heavy volume, 
Both of these days actually closed above 440. So technically we have the breakout. I just don't like the look of those long tails. When you start printing these dojis like this, where you're basically closing where you open, intraday you make moves, but you can't sustain it into the close. That's a little bit of, uh, bothersome. And it just tells me that there's indecision on the chart here at this level. So I would not be surprised to see LLNW turn back down. You can see the toll that these two, you know, fairly decent volume candles and failure to close at the highs or even near the highs. You can see the toll it took on the AD line. We're at about a two month low now on that AD line, even though, we're, you know, we're breaking out, setting new 52 week highs. So it just looks like maybe these four charts that I just showed you could be topping short term. Doesn't necessarily mean that they're top, topping long term and that they're going to be a problem longer term, but I wouldn't be surprised to see pullbacks on these. So I'll keep an eye on them and maybe we can come back and take a look at them in a few days. Next up, uh, breakouts, um, you know, candlesticks that maybe are showing breakouts. And so let's take a look at a few of these. Number one is Well Tower. Well Tower, you can see multiple tops up here around 87 to 88. Many, many, many tops. Well, last two days we finished above 88. Now we did come down and finished near the low of the day today, but we are in breakout territory. And notice the AD line is a little bit different on this one. It's actually broken out to about a five or six month high. So while price action has been going mostly sideways, it looks like maybe we're getting a little bit of accumulation there. And I think that that uh, could be a good thing. Um, MDRX, all scripts. Now this one I think uh, looks really good in that it had a nice uptrend, pulls back here, goes back close to this candle when you have the heavy volume gap up. That usually prov provides really good support. We got close to it and then reversed back up. But what I really like is on this move up, I think we put in a nice little cup, handle back close to the 20 day, and look at the volume pick up as we break out again to 22. This actually measures from about 22 down to say 19 and a quarter. So that's two and three quarters. This move, move measures up to about 24 and three quarters. So it's a little more than 10%. Um, would like to see the AD line confirm, but this whole move right in here, you can see the volume is picked up and I think uh, bodes well for the stock. So I'm looking for this cup and handle measurement to take MDRX up to about the 2475 level. Uh, the last one I wanted to show you is uh, Hudson Technologies. Pretty clearly, look at the volume coming in and look at that breakout, that nice hollow candle. Look at the AD line explode to the upside. Now, the stock was up 35% today. I'm not a big fan of chasing a stock that goes from $4 to 537 in one day. But on a pullback, you did have a breakout here above about 475. So I think 475 down to that open at 443, I think that range right in there would be a, a much better entry point if we do see a pullback. But I do like this breakout and I always like to see the very heavy volume confirm the breakout. And if you look back, over the last year, that was the heaviest volume the stock has seen. All right, moving on, earnings spotlight. Um, a few companies coming out after the bell. Um, first, let me go ahead and pull up the reaction to these uh, stocks, and then we'll take a look at the chart. First is CrowdStrike. This is a big, big one. Stock up 13.5% after hours, up $23. Now, it has been in a downtrend. We've got this triple bottom. Here's the reaction high, so we're not quite back up to there in after hours. We're at about 192 and change, 193. So that's going to put us up in here. We need to get a breakout above about 205. And honestly, maybe even that 210, 212 area right in here. Um, but those are going to be two overhead areas to watch closely on CrowdStrike. Um, the next one is FNV. This is Franco Nevada Corp. This is a gold stock. Gold has been going crazy. The stock's you know, obviously been taking off. After hours, up one penny. So I don't know, maybe it's a lot of good news is already built into the stock. We might have to wait. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to get a pullback. I think 150 would be a very interesting level on a pullback for maybe a bounce off of that level. Watch that 20-day EMA on FNV. Next one, BEKE. -E. This is uh, KE Holdings, stock up almost 3% after hours. It's been beaten down though quite a bit. You can see a lot of support on the way down in the 17 to 18 area. And look at the 20 day now between 17 and 18 as well. So I think any kind of strength 
And we could run, we could make a run up to 17, maybe even into the 17s. But if we do, I think that's where you're going to see a lot of sellers showing up. Um, another big software company, ASAN, this is Asan or Asana, uh, stock down 21% after hours, looked a lot like Crowd, uh, um, CrowdStrike. Coming down, had that uh, move back to the upside, and then kind of like a little triple bottom, except this one went the other way. And this is why earnings, they're so volatile. You've got to have the right mindset to want to hold a stock into its earnings report. I mean, if you're holding a stock long term, then obviously you have to hold through earnings reports, and that's a decision that you can make. But as a trader, you can simply sit it out and not take this chance. So going into its report, look at the stock going up 9.7%. Probably a lot of folks jumping in thinking, oh, the market must know something, right? You've heard that before. Well, yeah, the market did know something. That's why it's dropped from $140 down to 40 and change. I'd be careful about assuming you know, the day before earnings that that move is going to ultimately be the direction of the move after earnings. And you can see that was not the case here. Uh, Asana down almost, well, a little more than 21%, down to 38.50. Um, and that looks like another breakdown below the recent lows. On um, Thursday morning, we are going to get JD.com come out with their earnings. Let me uh, show you that one real quick. Um, stock did break down, been down quite a bit here just in the last week or so. Did break down before, below this triple bottom. It's coming back up, testing that resistance level. This is going to be a very interesting reaction tomorrow. If it does react positively, watch the 20-day moving average. That would be an interesting area where I think I would say even maybe from about 66 up to about 68 is going to be a critical area if JD has a good report or at least if it gaps up in the morning, I think it could struggle to get through that 68 area. And to the downside, I mean, anything back down below about 58 would be bearish in my opinion, especially a close there. All right, let's wrap up the show with the three you must see. <clears throat> These are uh, three companies, well, let me go through the chart here. Tapestry. <clears throat> so uh, Tapestry had support 36, 37 range, broke down below that on big volume, put in that doji, that indecision on heavy volume, and then we were able to bounce back off of it. I do think the combination of resistance, 36 to 37, along with that declining 20-day, could be a problem for the stock, so that's something to watch for. Next up, uh, Chipotle. Chipotle put in a double bottom, also put in a doji. And notice it actually coincided with the low all the way back in May. So when you get these false breakdowns intraday and it's a major support level, don't be surprised if you get a little bit of a bounce off of that. A lot of stops being triggered. And if you come back up and hold support, a lot of times that means market makers are in a long position. And if they're in a long position, you got a much better chance of a rally. So anyway, CMG. Nice day on Wednesday, up over $100 or 8%. We'll see if we can get back through the moving averages just above. And then the last one I wanted to point out, <clears throat> Datadog. Another one that had been under a lot of pressure, went down, tested this area at about 120, 122, and then bounced right off of it. Really nice reaction there. Again, got to get back through those moving averages. All right, that's it for me. I appreciate everybody tuning in. This is my last show of the week. Be careful. Got that CPI report. Let's see how the market reacts to it. Uh, Friday, consumer sentiment. And then next Tuesday and Wednesday, we got the Fed meeting. So we got a lot for the market to deal with over the next few days. Um, even head fakes to the upside, you got to be careful. Um, you know, watch for potential reversals. Anyway, uh, hopefully see you next Monday back over at Earnings Beats for your next Trading Places Live. Have a great rest of your week and weekend, everybody. See you next week. Happy trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.